Hey there, this is Tatiana from kawaiidrawings.com. Today we'll learn how to scan and edit your artwork in Photoshop. We'll look at the entire process, we'll remove the white background, fix any mistakes and play with different color options. By the end of this tutorial you'll have a perfectly isolated image that you can use for your creative project and even print on demand products. Ok, let's do it! Step 1 is to scan your artwork. I'm using an Epson scanner, but you can just as easily photograph your work and then follow the same steps to edit it. So I open my scanner program and for the most part I just use the default settings, except that I set the resolution to 600 in case I need to make it bigger later. Now draw a box around the part of the image that I want to capture and press scan. Ok, done! Now open the image in Photoshop by going to File, Open. And the first step is to save our scanned image as a Photoshop format. So go to File, Save As, select Photoshop Format from the drop down menu and press Save. Next rotate the image so that it's pointing the right way and we are ready for the next step. Step 2 is to edit the exposure of the image, which simply means how light or dark the image is. My scanner did a pretty good job, but I want to tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer, which has a super handy eyedropper feature. I simply tell Photoshop which part of the image should be white and the computer does the rest. It's great! I darken the shadows a little bit and go on to the next step. Step 3 is to remove the white background. Now there are many ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the fastest and most effective way. Press L to switch to the lasso tool and loosely draw around your image to select it. Now press Command Shift I to invert the selection and press Delete to delete the extra white space. Ok, this is really cool. We're going to use the one tool to remove all the remaining white areas, once again letting the computer do all the hard work. And all we have to do now is to remove any little remaining pieces. So I make a new layer, fill it with black and press E to switch to the eraser tool. Now I'll use the eraser to go along the edge and clean up any remaining pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just cleaning up any extra debris. Ok, that looks good. Now we've removed the white background and ready for the next step. Step 4 is to fix any mistakes, which inevitably will happen. Like for example, you see there is this weird white dot at the top. But that's ok, you can fix it really fast and easy by using content aware fill, once again letting the computer do all the work so you have a fast and streamlined workflow. Look around your image, are there any other areas that could benefit from this treatment? I can see some pencil lines coming through so I'm just going to remove them. Ok, all good. Next step is really neat too. For step 5 we're going to adjust the shape using the liquify filter. For example, I don't like how the cap of the acorn is sticking out too much, so I press command shift x to bring up the liquify menu. And look, I'm just using the brush to shape and mold the painting. It's almost like sculpting with clay. So cool. Here is before and after. Before and after. It's a small change, but it makes a difference. Ok, next step is to fix up the face. When I bring down the guide, I can see that the eyes are not perfectly aligned. I need to move the left eye a little bit up and the cheek a little bit down. I can easily do that by drawing a selection around the eye and then literally just moving it up a little bit. Do the same with the cheek, draw a selection around it and nudge it down until it's aligned with the opposite cheek. It's all good but now we have this funny looking empty spaces, that's ok, we can fill them using content aware fill again and the shortcut for that is shift F5. For the last step we're going to look at color correction. Again, my scanner did a pretty good job and I don't think this image needs much correcting, but I'll show you the options anyway. First let's play with hue saturation. I'm going to use an adjustment layer to do these changes. This way I don't actually touch the original image, so I can remove or change the effect at any time. 
Ok, so here you see what happens if you change the hue or saturation. And there is also a colorized option that turns the image into a sort of black and white version with a single color. And look, now I can just delete the whole layer and return back to my original image. Cool, right? Ok, next let's play with the color balance. Here you can make more subtle changes. You can make the overall image more red or blue and just see what you like. That kinda looks nice. Here is the before and after this color adjustment. And finally, if you just want to give your image a little bit more oomph, add a vibrance adjustment layer and set the value somewhere between 30 and 50. The effect is subtle, so the image still looks natural. And that's it, we're all done. Now we have a perfectly isolated image that will look great on different textures and can even be placed on products. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Let me know your favorite tip in the comments below and please subscribe for more tutorials like this. See you soon!